Hello and welcome to episode 69 of the Your Next Chapter podcast. This is Angela Raspis. Now, a little bit of a twist in today's episode. I'm actually taking a webinar which I ran earlier this year and turning it into a podcast episode for you. Now, this is the Review and Renew webinar. I run it every year and in fact, I ran it three times in October and November because it's such a juicy way of evaluating your year. Now, this is a really important part. It's about looking back and taking stock of how far you have come. Us women can be really, really good at going, hmm, I've still got so far to go and it's going to be so hard in this next chapter business. But really, if you do turn and pause for a moment, you will see that there is a ton of things that you've achieved this year. And I really like to use those as future fuel to give you the energy and the momentum and the encouragement to move forward into 2018 with a whole lot of new focus. So in these webinars, we do that. We look backwards. We also take stock on what didn't work quite as well as you would have liked so that you can work out how to close the gaps to look at what should I let go of? What should I change? What should I introduce? What new things are calling me for the new year? And then I share some really good tips on how to actually structure and strategize yourself to set yourself up for success in 2018. Now, rest assured, if you're listening to this episode and it's not the end of 2017, that is absolutely fine because I'm a big believer in planning in 90-day sprints. These are cascade plans that I utilize with all of my clients in my mastermind circles and in the new Next Chapter Business Club, which I've just launched as well. And 90 days is a really good period of time to allow yourself to focus on your specific goals. And in this episode, you'll find out about trifecta goals and how those work really well for you. So rather than be concerned about, oh, it's not the end of the year, can I really listen to and get something out of this episode? Rest assured that you absolutely can. The advice, the guidance, the tips that I share are timeless and you'll be able to take stock at any time you decide to pause and reflect and plan no matter what time of the year you're at. Now, the other thing is, obviously, these were webinars. So there was visuals, and I use Zoom, which is a video conferencing platform. So I often get to, to see who it is that I'm working with. And obviously, we can't do that on a podcast. So I've got the next best thing for you. I have in this episode given you a copy of both the slides and also the comprehensive workbook that you can complete as a part of listening to this podcast. So you might be able to do it right now if you're driving along somewhere or gardening or going for a walk, but you can certainly pop back and download these resources and revisit this episode again and to do the work because it's so important for us to actually take action on what we learn. Now, I'm a definite lifelong learner. You can't know, keep me away from a new book, a new idea, a new conference, a new event. I absolutely love taking it in, curating it, and then sharing it with you, with my community. But learning's not enough. We've actually got to then evaluate and take action, implement the pieces that I'm talking about in this particular episode that resonate with you. The things that, that feel right, that you've got a really intuitive hit, this will work for me. Please give those a go and let go of the things that don't. I'm all for you building a wholehearted next chapter business. And that very much means it needs to be aligned with your values and the type of business that you want to build. So it blends in with your life as well. In fact, I do talk about that quite extensively in this particular recording. So anyhow, to grab those resources, go to angelaraspis.com forward slash 6969 download. And that will take you through to a page where you can opt in to grab and download those slides and that workbook. But of course, the very first step is to listen in and to see, as I said, what resonates with you. Now, you will notice that the call or rather the recording, the episode finishes quite abruptly. And I apologize for that. But at the end of the webinar on this occasion, I did issue an invitation to the participants to join me in a next chapter success circle. Those are my masterminds for the new year. Now, they're all filled now for the first intake. So I cut that off at the end. But look, if you really 
are looking for support, just pop over to my Work With Me page on my website. You'll find lots of different ways in which I can be on your support team in 2018, 19 and beyond. But I really hope you enjoy this episode and do get some juicy, juicy guidance and insight from it that'll help you flourish no matter what time of the year that you happen to listen to this. Inspiration, clarity, confidence, and wholehearted business strategy. Welcome to Your Next Chapter, the podcast especially for women in their 40s and beyond who know that business and personal development go hand in hand. Tune in each week for marketing, mindset, and personal growth strategies, along with inspiring stories from women around the world who are creating new businesses and lives that are personally fulfilling and financially rewarding. If you're looking to create a business and life you love, you're in great company. Let's find out what will unfold in your next chapter. I'm your host, Angela Raspis, and I'm so delighted that you're here. And we are recording. So welcome to the Review and Renew webinar, the second in the series that I'm doing for lovely ladies like yourselves in my community who are looking at turning back around and assessing how has 2017 gone using what I call future fuel. So looking at your successes and building upon those for 2018, but also making some decisions about what it is that needs to be let go of or what it needs that needs to be changed or introduced or tweaked or twisted so that you can move into 2018 with a really clear focus and confidence about what it is that you're creating. So we're going to spend probably about an hour, maybe an hour and a quarter, just depends on how many questions that you have because it's really important in this space you have the opportunity to ask direct questions whilst we're together. And you'll also, during the presentation, towards the end, I'll talk to you about an opportunity for you to step forward and have some extra support in 2018. But most importantly, I want you to walk away from this webinar with clarity and confidence and some clear ideas on what you're going to action in 2018. So I'm going to share my screen to go to the slides. And that, may, that means that I can't see you always when I'm actually doing the presentation. So if you're waving wildly at me because there's this question that you just have to ask, it's you know burning a hole in the side of your mouth, then just unmute yourself and go, Angela, I have to ask this. And I shall pause and make sure that I give you the attention that you need there. Now, does everybody have a copy of the workbook? Okay, is there anyone that doesn't have it? Because if not, I will um, pop the link. In fact, I'll do it now anyway. I'll just pop the link into the chat box for you. Bum, bum, bum. So there is a link there in chat, which you can see down the bottom of the screen, just in case you needed to get yourself a copy of the workbook. And it's a really good idea to go back through and actually complete it, to actually take action. I'm a big action taker. Okay, so I will now go to our slides. Dun, dun, dun. And you are in the right place if this is what you're anticipating, review and renew for 2018. Okay, so this is about giving you what I see as some of the core keys to help you move forward, as I mentioned, with clarity and confidence. Oop, and a little beat. So thank you for prioritising being here today. You can, as I said, always go back and listen to the recording, but this energy happens when you're here live and the information and the, the guidance can land and you can ask those questions that you have. So thank you for prioritising that. Oh, I have a message already. One second. Ah, is there a meeting password? Yes, there is. Thanks, Lisa, for sending that through. It's renewed, exactly. Okay, so you're going to leave here today after our time together with what I think are the core insights that you need to create what I call a wholeheartedly fulfilling business. I'm all about balancing the head and the heart. Got to have strategy, but it's got to feel good. Otherwise, you just don't tend to do it. Now, four questions that I think you really need to ask yourself so that you can fuel inspiration and motivation throughout the year. So four very important questions. Clarity on the services and the programs and the market opportunities that you're going to focus on in 2018 because you don't want to do everything. And how to set trifecta goals which combine heart and smart objectives. Trifecta goals are one of the, the wee things that I teach all of my clients. It's about reinforcing progress, not looking for perfection. So I'll share that concept with you. And how to step out of options overwhelm because it seems like every day there's a new way of marketing that pops up. Yes, Lisa's nodding. She knows this feeling. There's a new way of marketing that tends to appear 
And if, like many of us, you have what I call bright, shiny options syndrome, then you'll be like jumping over there and going, well, maybe I need to try this too, and maybe I need to try that too. And you end up stretching yourself very thin and not actually having a good impact or traction in each of those areas. So wholehearted marketing is a way of connecting with your most aligned clients, which I'll touch on as well. And a big part of this is how to recognize and avoid what I've seen as entrepreneurial danger zones that you can fall into and that can really curtail your confidence and your creativity and your cash flow because at the end of the day, we're not building charities, we're not building hobbies. What we're looking for is a sustainable business that will keep you going long term. So these danger zones, and there's three core ones, are things you need to be aware of because when you dial up your awareness, you've got a better chance of avoiding them or getting the heck out of them once you're in there. So I've got some good strategies for you to use there. And then I use many, many planning tools. Um, it's interesting, I'm sort of like this contradiction because I'm spontaneous, I like having variety, but a framework that allows me to plan so I actually get stuff done is really important. So I'm going to share the first level of that framework with you today. So, and as I mentioned, you'll also have an invitation to come and hang out in some great company in 2018. I'm a big believer in masterminds and you've probably heard the quote, that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So I'd love one of those people to be me. <laughs> and also some other wonderful ladies that I have in my community, but we'll talk about that later. So you may have met me before. You may be on this call for the first time thinking, who the heck is this Angela woman? Well, just to give you a very quick praises, I'm a business mentor. I call myself a mentor rather than a coach because I have actually created and grown my own multiple six-figure business when I had a marketing agency, full-time staff, et cetera, et cetera. But in 2012 went, I've had it. I don't want to work like this anymore. And I actually made a decision to move into what I call my next chapter. So I'm a marketer by trade. I facilitate masterminds. I've just finished Infinite Possibilities training with Mike Dooley. You may have heard that name through Notes from the Universe. So it's that, it's that um, sort of, I guess, a description to, that you would relate to is you've got strategy on one side. But on the other side, you've got soul. It's following universal principles. It's following your heart. And I like to combine both. I'm a mum. My son's 18. He's down at um, Canberra studying psychology. And my daughter is 14 and year nine here in Sydney. And I have two bonus boys. They were three and five when I met them. They're now 30 and 28. So they've been around for a while. And I'm a soccer player. A lot of people don't know that. But I love racing around on a soccer pitch. Somewhat inelegantly. And what I lack in skill, I make up for with enthusiasm as far as I'm concerned. So I've created a next chapter business in life and my job now is to help you do the same. So as I was mentioning before, my journey from like feeling completely constrained by my business, you know, from the outside, fantastic, ticking all the goals, I bought an office, I had this whole team, clients around Australia, but on the inside, I was burning out. If anyone here is in the health and energy scenario, they would relate to this enormously. But I hate to admit I was smoking like a chimney, blood pressure sky high, and just not really wanting to go to work. And this whole owning your own business is supposed to give you freedom and flexibility. Well, it wasn't, so I made the decision to change. So this is the message that I really want you to take away. There's two parts to it. Number one is that, especially on social media, we see everyone like, whooshka, everything's fabulous. And I love my life and I love my business and it's awesome and I made a million dollars yesterday. And what it really looks like is on the, on the other side of the coin, that we can get there if we define success for us. Not on other people's terms, but what it means to us. But even whatever that is, you're still going to go around and around in a few circles to get there. That's the way it works. There is not a direct route. So I like to think of your next chapter as an evolution rather than a revolution. Yeah, it will take some time but, and you will pivot and you will change as you go along, but that is the beauty of your ability to be flexible when you're running your own show. So I'd like to introduce you to the Wholehearted Success Trilogy, something that I created when I was in that transition into the new way of working. And these are the pieces that I've seen are really important for you to combine together. The strategy, yes, but your values, the importance of your business being built around your values, the importance of mindset, you've heard it so often, you know, success is 90% mindset and 10% skills and experience. It's actually true, bugger it, but that's a good thing because you have complete and utter control once you dial up your awareness on where your mind sits. So your mindset's an important part. You need clarity, 
in the top half and you need inspired action. That means consistent inspired action. I just got a, a question, I'm just zapping over to there. I can't seem to get sound. Have video but no audio. Oh. Uh, is, there, is anybody else having problems with audio? No? Okay. Amanda, let me just come down to you. Where are you? Well, Amanda. I'm just going to... Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, Amanda, I don't seem to... Sorry, everybody, it will just be a sec. Looking at your connection, it's not saying that you have sound. So that would appear to be something to do with your speakers at your end. I'm sorry to say, because I don't have an option here to actually click on your sound. So if I can't see it, it means that it's hiding in general. So what you might want to try is going out and coming in again. And even if you have a set of little headphones, like I've got on little Apple headphones, you might find you can click in and listen to the sound directly. Oh, and Lindsay, you have to opt into internet audio. Okay. Lindsay, if you can help Amanda, that would be great, because I obviously don't have the proper answer. But we'll get you sorted, Amanda. Okay, I'll just pop back to here. So these are the pieces that I see in the Wholehearted Success Trilogy, which are really important to have. And there are spots to fill in in your workbook here, and they look like this. <clears throat> so I've found that when you combine those three pieces, the strategy, the mindset, the values, that's when you start to build a business that's fulfilling because it's aligned with who you are, but it's also sustainable. If it's not wrapped around your values, you will burn out. That's what I've experienced and I've seen in other people as well. So when you align your values, yes, you avoid the burnout, but your enthusiasm also becomes contagious because the things that you're enthusiastic about, I often say enthusiasm is currency. It's like if I just sat here and talked to you about, you know, marketing and and how you could build a business and other. If there's no enthusiasm, it doesn't bring you along on the journey. It doesn't in, invigorate you. So what's the thing that you are most enthusiastic about? That is the place to be leading from. Now with a strong and supportive mindset, you're less likely to do the self-sabotage and you're much more likely to be able to expand into your vision. Now self-sabotage is a tricky little thing it can even be a case of putting in fantastic work in terms of doing webinars and, and not following them up, just not quite getting to the end. That is an example of self-sabotage. So you have to be conscious of what it is for you. How does it show up? It could be that you avoid having conversations around sales. It could be that you don't like actually asking for the sale. There could be lots of different ways in which you can self-sabotage. You're not even putting yourself out there in the first place. So what is it for you? So when you develop your own style of strategy, and by that I mean marketing strategy, that's when you get out of overwhelm. You go, those options over there are not for me. Great example. I used to be on Twitter, goodness knows why, trying to restrain myself to 144 characters was ridiculous. And more so, my potential clients are not on Twitter. It's not a watering hole. So just because it's there doesn't mean you have to use it. So getting your own style of strategy will take you out of, out of overwhelm. Get you ignoring the bright, shiny options. I like people in my world to wear glass blinkers. So you're focused forward. You can see what's going on. So you can make decisions as to whether or not you will try something new, but you are focused forward on your end game. So when you take that consistent action, you're more likely to attract aligned clients. Now, what I mean by aligned is that, for example, when you're having sales conversations, an average conversion rate, i.e. the number of people you talk to before you have someone say yes, that averages between five and seven. So one out of every five to seven conversations, you'll get a yes. These days, because I am very aligned with who I am, what I stand for, I'm very much this is me, and the consistent messages that are out in the marketplace means that when I have a conversation with somebody, my conversion rate is typically one in two, sometimes even one in one. And it's because people who are not aligned with me don't even call. They don't come on to webinars. They don't opt in to my newsletter list. And that's what I want for you. I want you to have a quality community as opposed to quantity. Because you don't have to have, a, I've heard the expression, um, list shame which is like, oh my goodness, I've only got you know 420 people on my list, that's just terrible. No, it's not. If they are people that really engage with you, 
and are your aligned potential clients, you don't have to have a list the size of the Rock of Gibraltar. It's just not necessary. But it is very much about alignment. Okay. So uh, with those pieces in place, that's where we're going to start today. Oops, let's hit the right button. Because the next piece I want to talk to you about is your vision. Now vision, again, you've heard this before, you've heard how important it is, but the difference between um, having a vision and not is the difference between inspiration and motivation. Okay, motivation is being pushed. Inspiration is being pulled. Okay, inspiration is about your desire to make a difference and you don't have to have like Mother Teresa's level of impact. You can just change your slice of the world. You don't have to change the world. That having been said, if your passion is to change the world, go for it. But what I'm saying here is that your definition of what inspires you is what counts. That's what counts. And I love this quote, how purpose is the place where your deep gladness fills the world's needs. Now that's why I was talking about enthusiasm. So what delights you and enthuses you, you're much more likely to be able to meet people within the world with that sense of purpose. So it, it anchors you. So when the going gets tough, and you know, I'm a, I'm a truth talker, you know, being an entrepreneur is not easy. If it was, everyone would do it. Okay? But it means that when the going is tough, when you're like, oh my goodness, is this ever going to come together, you can reconnect back to your vision, you've got a much better chance of getting back on the horse and keeping on going when you hit those roadblocks. Okay? Now I was running... Um, a retreat a couple of weeks ago and one of the women on the retreat, I run retreats both for people who are first coming into my world and also they're a part of my mastermind circles. But on this retreat it was a new woman working with me and she had this wonderful expression. She said, I've got my little whys sorted out but I haven't got my big why yet. And I love that concept and I'll just explain what she means. So I want you to have a think about this. It's not in your workbook because this is a new slide from the last time. But what it's about is your little whys might be things like working from home, you know, being able to be flexible with your time so that you can pick up the kids from school or go to yoga in the morning. It might be that you want to be your own boss. It could be lots of different little whys that your role at the moment is ticking all the boxes. But that big why for standing for something more than what you sell is really important. Okay, and that's the one I've got some questions to help you uncover it. So, what's the core issue you feel passionate about and believe that you can offer a solution to? Who do you feel most needs that solution? And these questions are in your workbook, so you can go back and ponder them. And why do you feel called to provide this solution? So just as an example, the core issue that I feel very passionate about is the concept of next chapters, second chances, new directions, that you don't have to, like there's an expression, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So I was an excellent strategic marketer. Just because I could didn't mean I had to. So I want, it's my passion to make women understand that they can choose to move into a next chapter. But a big chunk of that is the core issue of worthiness because so many of us doubt the worth of what it is that we have to offer the world. And part of my story, which is very clear on my website and other places, is that I am um, in what's called the recovery movement. So I had addiction problems many years ago. And that is the, is the absolute concept of unworthiness. And I know what it's like to be in that place of complete self-doubt. And that's my other side of my why, how important it is to empower women to understand that what you have to offer the market is absolutely valuable and needed. We just have to work out how to connect you to that market and help you communicate it clearly. So those three questions are really important for you. And then you need to communicate it. It's all very well to hold it in your heart, but you've got to get it out into the world. Now, you may have heard of Simon Sinek, Start With Why. If you haven't, it's an awesome TED Talk that I really um, recommend you Googling and listening to. But Simon adds on to this that our, action, our vision is actionable only if we share it. Without sharing, it's just a figment of our imagination. So you need to share your vision out to the world. And so the people who are attracted to it are your aligned clients. Now, you're, it, this is what differentiates you in the marketplace and it provides that connection. So what I want you to understand about vision and where you use it is that think of the world divided up into groups of three. Okay, you've got your big message 
out there in Times Square on a billboard and a third of the world will walk along and look at your purpose, your why, your vision and go, that sucks. That is ridiculous. Who does she think she is? That's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard. That's fine. Let them go. Okay? There's another billboard around the corner for them. Another third of the world will walk up and they'll look at your vision that you've poured your heart and soul into and they'll go, meh, doesn't do it for me. That is also fine. There's another billboard for them around the corner. But it's the final third of people, figuratively speaking, who look at your message and go, that's exactly how I feel. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Those are your most aligned clients. And we go down you know, further than that into your niche as well. But the problem is with us women, so often we, tr we spend so much of our time trying to convince the first two thirds that they should be with us, work with us, adopt our principles and our philosophy. Don't do that, okay? There's other people for them. I only want you to put your time, your effort, your focus into the people who resonate with your message. And that means you've got to share it. Your message should repel just as much as it attracts. Then you know you've got a strong message. So there's a couple of other questions to ask yourself. What do you stand for? What do you believe? What do you want for your clients? Where are you taking them to across that bridge to a new possibility? And the last bit, the biggie, what challenges have you overcome? Okay, these questions in, con in conjunction with those bigger vision ones are the things that really tie you down and anchor you into what you're standing for. And I want to know because I want to feel resonance and connection with you. Us women, especially in service-based businesses, we are the business. And so what we've gone through is the message. Okay? And you don't have to have, you know, I don't know, just been left on a desert island starving and you built a boat and found your way back to reality. I mean, you don't have to go through a huge challenge. It could just be you found a better way of creating Pinterest boards and algorithms. You know, it doesn't have to be a tragedy, but it does have to be a challenge. Like, I couldn't do it. I worked it out. Or, you know, there was something not working with me. I worked it out. And now I want to share it with you. This is all about you helping people move around the potholes, you know, or if they fall into one, a quicker way of getting out. So you really, you need to take some time with this. Like that, I'm a big journaler, lots and lots of journaling. And so don't think that, that those questions, you can knock them out in five minutes and there you go, because they form the backbone of your business and they're really important. They will change, they will evolve, but you've got to start there. Because I want you to become a lighthouse. Right? So you're upstanding for something really strongly so I can find you in the crowd. And when you've got that story, obviously well, I, I um, advocate working with a copywriter if you can, but I've got great resources that can help you get started. But you're using your message on your website and social media, on newsletters, Facebook Lives, everywhere. You blend it in. Just in the way that I did at the beginning of this webinar and explained just a smidgen of what I stand for and what I believe. And that will either resonate with you or you'll run away and never get to another webinar. And that's okay. I want the same for you guys. So the second part here is your values. Okay. Now it's going to be a lot easier for you to market and sell services that you really feel aligned with. That excitement I talked about when you leverage your strengths and values. So it's a very simple exercise. Off the, off the call, have a think about, this is just an example of some words, some values. Google it. There's a hundred different values exercises out there. But what we're looking for next is what do your values look like in action and are they in your business? For example, if your value is community and you look at your business and go, okay, where is community present in my business? And you go, oh my goodness, all my services are one-to-one. -one. I don't actually have community in my business. Then that could explain why you feel a little bit drained, a little bit out of sorts. So what could you do to align with that value? Well, you might develop a group program. You might start a Facebook group. You might take people away on retreats. I guess you could probably hear that community is pretty high on my values. So if it is one of yours, how will you bring it into your business? Another example, learning. A lot of women in my world are um, lifelong learners is the expression. But there was um, someone who was posting in, in the Next Chapter Facebook group the other day asking about how do we find time for reading? Because that was one of her values, which is connected to learning. And what she recognised is she wasn't making time for it. Hence, she wasn't reading books. 
So what can you do? You can buy a book on a topic that you find interesting and, and just put aside a certain amount of time each day just as a starting point. Oh, Justine, did you have your hand up to ask something or were you stretching? No, sorry. Just stretching? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, no, no, I didn't have my hand up. Sorry. <laughs> That's a cast. I was going to be like a school teacher there. Yeah. All good. I'm muted again. <laughs> Yeah, so what, um, what happened in that instance is that um, this particular woman realised that she needed to change her prioritising and, you know, drop a couple of Netflix programmes at night and bring reading and learning back into her business and into her life. So what is it for you? Are there values that at the moment you don't have in your business and what can you do to change that? So that's a wee exercise to do outside of the call. Because your values are your compass. Once you know what they are, it's not difficult to make decisions based on them. You know, one of my values is, um, what's a good way of describing it? Surprise and delight. Like I, I adore giving gifts. It's just part of what I do. And, and I also, this isn't a value, this is a, this is a fetish. I love stationery. And so do a lot of people in my community. And so it's not surprising at the retreat last week, what were the gifts that were given out? They had a little bit to do with stationery. Oh, I was thinking I had one of them here to show you, but I must have left it downstairs. But anyhow, so I'm bringing that value into my business. What can you do to be more aligned with your values? So that's the foundation stuff. Now we're actually going to get into a bit more of the meaty stuff. But just pausing for a sec, is there any questions, any comments, anything that anyone would like to bring up at the moment before we keep moving? Just whizzing through the people on the side. Nope, all good. Well, as I said, just yell out if something comes up. So let's get started. The first key in terms of the wholehearted keys for you to review the year so that you can move forward. You need evaluation. Now this does mean we have to look at goals. And the first question to ask yourself is how are you tracking against your 2017 goals? And if there is a little voice in your head that goes, um, don't think I set me, voila, there's one of the first things that you will change for 2018. So let's talk about goals. Did you set them? Were they on different levels, not just one big meaty goal for the whole year? Have you reverse gapped yourself? And I'll show you what that means shortly. And how have you celebrated your progress? Us women, again, we have such a great habit of looking, I've still got to do that and I've still got to do that. And very rarely turning around and going, oh my goodness, look how far I've come. And that reverse gapping is really important and we miss it so often. There was a classic Harvard study back in 1979 where 3% of students in this particular year on this longitudinal study that they started had written goals and plans. They actually took the time out to sit down and plan and write goals. 13% had goals but they were up here in their head. They weren't actually written down and 84% didn't have goals. What happened? 10 years later in this longitudinal study, they went back and they found that the people who had those 13% who had goals, even though they didn't write them down, were earning, talking about cash flow here, twice the amount of revenue as those who didn't have goals. But here's the kicker. The 3% who'd written them down and gave time to planning and goal setting were in the revenue bracket 10 times higher than the other 97% of the class. Now, I know that you're in business to make a difference, that the work you're doing in the world is important to you and it's enjoyable and fulfilling. That's important. But as I mentioned, you are also in the business to make revenue. You deserve to be well compensated for what it is that you provide. And we can see a direct link between setting goals and planning and getting that sort of outcome. I have my goals. This is just an, an example of fortnightly goals that were up um, from my own mastermind. I'm in a mastermind with a wonderful woman who currently, I think she's in Belgium. She's a digital nomad, roams around a lot. No kids, no husband, so she gets to move. But after our call, I put up my core goals. And you'll notice, oh my goodness, there's only two. Because that's another thing that we get wrong, is that we set ourselves 15 goals to, com to complete in the next two weeks. And then we beat the hell out of ourselves when we don't actually achieve them. So start small. So that's just an example. That's up above my desk, I like them to be visible. Now I believe in setting trifecta goals. I mentioned this to you guys at the beginning. Now a trifecta goal is on several levels. Okay? When we're setting goals in the next chapter circles, we're always remembering this. There is the acceptable, the stretch, 
and the unicorn level. What the heck do I mean? Those of you who've worked with me that are laughing on the call know this already, but I'll share with everyone else. So think, for example, if you were looking at getting one-on-one -on -one clients in the first quarter of 2018, for example, and let's say for you, getting six one-on-one -on -one clients would be awesome. And so you set that as the goal. Now, if you get three clients, does that mean you're a big fat failure? No. If you get 11 clients, does that mean you're lousy at goal setting? No. So what I suggest you do is that you set the trifecta. So the acceptable level, and this would be what covers your expenses so that you're in the black. Let's say that that's three clients. I don't know because obviously you've got to run the figures. So your acceptable level might be three. Your stretch level might be five. And your unicorn level might be eight. Okay, got to run the numbers, but the reason behind doing this is that it allows you to celebrate your progress. So when you book your third client, you run around in happiness and buy yourself some flowers or whatever the case may be. But you look and you do some reverse gapping that then fuels you to move forward to your stretch goal, which then fuels you to move forward to your unicorn goal. I actually don't know why it was called a unicorn goal. It just hit me one day and that's what it's been ever since. But every goal that you have, wherever possible, trifecta it. Okay, so revenue for the year. Don't just say, I want to create $50,000 worth of revenue. Set it on, on targets as in 35,000, 50,000, 75,000. You know, trifecta it. Now, again, I'm just making figures up because I don't know the circumstances of your business. And not every single goal can be trifecta, i.e., I want to start studying psychology at university. That's a goal. But I guess you could trifecta it. It could be the local university or it could be interstate or it could be Harvard. Who knows? But I'm joking. So you might just be able to set a one-level goal for that. Okay? But trifecta goals are really powerful. And so is that reverse gapping to give you that future fuel. You need to pause. I use um, a yearly planner, a cascade plan, which I'll touch on briefly for you guys later and also a weekly planner, and at the top of each one of these, what happens is that you reconnect to your vision, and then in the weekly planner in particular, and I've put that up in the Next Chapter Facebook group, so you can go and get a copy of it, but that weekly planner, the first thing I ask is, what are you celebrating from last week? Okay, that's really important, I want you, and quite often when I'm doing my planner, I have to open my diary again and actually remind myself what happened last week, because I'm so focused on what's happening this week. But grounding and anchoring yourself in that success you've already had gives you that future fuel for moving forward. So I want you to do some self-acknowledgement when you're off this call. What have you made progress in and are proud about for this year? Because I guarantee you, even if you haven't created the success that you anticipated in 2017, there is lots of stuff that you have done, pivoted, moved, expanded, changed, achieved, that you're not acknowledging in the way that you should. And I only use shoulds very rarely, but this is a should. <laughs> this is an important should. So what are you making progress of? What are you proud of? And then how will you celebrate? Okay. When you've made that progress, I want you to be prepared for how will you celebrate it. One of the things that I do is I buy flowers every week. That's important to me. I love it. It makes me feel good. It fuels me. And so flowers is one of the ways in which I celebrate. But there's lots of other ways as well. But what is it for you? They don't have to be Tiffany's diamonds. Well, they can if you like. They can be little things as well as big things. But I'd love to know that you have committed to how you'll celebrate. Might be a facial. Might be a weekend away. Might be new stationery. I don't need an excuse for that. But it's important. What is it for you that makes you feel fabulous that you'll use to celebrate your progress? Okay. So we'll move on to the second key. So you've looked backwards. Now this is what I keep rabbiting on about. You deserve to be well compensated for the work that you do in the world. Okay? So you need to take some time to look at the revenue streams that you created in 2017. Okay? You want to ask yourself, what percentage of my overall revenue did each service, product or program deliver? So you might have one-on-one -on -one coaching, you might have oils that you sell, you might have retreats that you run. It's obviously different for every person. But look at the total revenue that you created for the year. And this is revenue, this is not profit. 
So this is revenue in as opposed to you know, before your expenses and that come out. But find out which are the ones that are contributing the highest percentage to you. Oops, made a beepy noise. Then I want you to ask yourself, did I market each line or product or program proactively? Because we can sometimes make the mistake of looking at something and going, well, that didn't sell, should chuck that one out. But if we actually take a step back and look at what was the communication like? What's the messaging like? Was it just on my website or did I actually go out and talk about it? Do I have a particular promotional activity and marketing strategy wrapped around supporting that particular product? Example, I have um, a self-study program called Your Journey Board on my website. And that is specifically for women who are not sure what their next chapter is going to look like. And it's about looking back and current to work out what you're going to do going forward in terms of your skills and what business you could build. Now, I reckon this year, I'd have to go back and look specifically, but I've only sold about half a dozen of those. Now, I know that it is a fantastic program from the feedback that I've got. So I could, if I just looked at that top line and went like, oh my goodness, I only sold six of them. Well, that's crap, I should chuck it out. That's not actually true because I did not give it any attention this year. There may have been the very occasional social media post, but that's it. So don't judge the result purely on the result. Go back and look at, have you marketed this effectively as an example? Does it fit the audience that you were talking to now? These are questions you need to ask yourself. You also need to say, and did I have conversations with prospects? So if I was selling, for example, one-on-one -on -one coaching programs, how many conversations did I manage? Remember I mentioned at the start that conversion rate of one in five to seven down to one in two, depending on where you're at. But if you don't have any conversations, then it's pretty difficult to sell something. So you need to look at that. How often did I actually engage and talk with people and specifically make an offer? Because the problem or the challenge might be that I didn't do that part or I got them on the call, but I, I'm not comfortable selling. So you've got to do a little bit of forensic work here and work out where is the break, where is the point where it broke. Okay. And I also said there, what did they say? One of the best things that you can do when you're having conversations with potential clients is take copious amounts of notes and then go back through. This is like never leave home without a highlighter. It is a very powerful piece of equipment for people with businesses. You go back through those conversations and you highlight the commonalities in terms of what people have been saying because you will find that they have common points of pain that you can address better. Okay, and the last bit, trust me to bring up excitement again, did I feel excited and enthused by each one of those products and services? Or does the feeling of delivering it just make you go Because if it makes you feel like that, there's a very good chance it's not aligned with your values. You're not excited about it, you're not gonna present it with enthusiasm. And your enthusiasm is currency. So some very core cool questions to ask. So, when you've done that sort of analysis, then and only then do you start asking yourself, well, what should I keep? What needs to be changed? Am I missing a gap with the problem that my clients have that I need to bring something else in? One of the things that came up just as an example when I was two retreats ago and I was taking the girls on the retreat through the concept of signature system. So how to produce your own system to take clients from where they are to where they want to be. They're usually five to seven steps. It forms like the backbone or the framework of your delivery. And it was pointed out to me that I don't actually offer that as a masterclass. I only do that in retreat or in my mastermind circles. But it's something that more people might need to help them break through. So it's planted a little seed that might be something I introduce in the new year. So I'm doing exactly what I'm teaching you guys here. It's exactly the process that I go through. But of course, just that last reminder, where's the gap? If it hasn't performed the way you anticipated, is there a problem with the marketing? Is there a problem with the nurturing in terms of educating people about how this can help them? Is it sales conversations or something else? So give yourself some time to do this analysis because this will very much form what you do in the new year. Boom, boom, boom. And I just want to introduce you to a stumbling block that you might be having. <clears throat> now, I've talked about purpose and vision. And I just need a glug of water, one sec. 
Ah, so I've talked about purpose and vision. Vital, absolutely vital. But, is the but. Does your market want and value your solution? And really importantly, are they willing to pay for it? Because sometimes we create a solution that we're passionate about, but it doesn't have a big enough trigger or need in the people we're taking it to, and therefore they do not buy it. Okay? So in other words, you're asking yourself, are you solving a big enough problem? Now I know that planning is a big issue for my community. In the research and the surveys that I've done, having planning tools and having the structure of how to evaluate and move forward is really important. It's a big problem. Without this, you can sort of just like flounder around. So I know that this webinar, for example, solves a specific problem. But what I want you guys to go through is the 50 questions task. And this one you obviously can't do whilst you're on the webinar. This is where you actually sit down, preferably with a cold drink and a nice comfortable seat, and you ask yourself, what are all the problems that my most aligned client is facing? And you literally don't, um, don't censor yourself here, don't black hat, just chuck down all the problems, what you hear, what you think, what you feel. Once you've done that, and that will take you more than one sitting, okay? Work through it, get as many down as you can. You're asking yourself, what are their core tompas? Now, a tompa, in my world, is a top of mind, problem, pain, or aspiration. Another way of looking at it is it what wakes them up, or you up at 3 a.m. thinking, oh my God, how am I going to solve this? Okay, I call them tompas because it's not always pain. It can be aspirational as well. So top of mind, problem, pain, or aspiration. In those 50 questions, that's what you're looking for. What are all the things that people feel pain around or see as a problem or a challenge that's holding them back or frustrating them or upsetting them or that they're really looking forward to achieving? And when you've got that, you will see that they tend to come into different areas. There'll be commonalities. Now, this is an example. Um, I was down in Melbourne about three weeks ago running a marketing workshop for an accountancy firm. And when we did the 50 questions, which they'd done some homework on before, we found that all the different tompas came into three core areas. Sometimes there's four, but in this case there was three. And their clients were struggling with being time poor and just not feeling that they could get the stuff done that they wanted to get done. They were struggling with staffing, both getting and keeping good staff, and they were struggling with cash flow, getting paid on time so that they could meet their debts. And so the solution that the accountancy firm offers must address those three tompas because if someone otherwise, it's, it's just not seen as a comprehensive enough or as valuable enough or as impactful enough. Now, I know, for example, with my own people, with my own audiences, is that marketing, clarity, and confidence are three of the absolute biggest clusters of problems or pain that people feel. Okay, clarity about the who am I and what am I going to offer and who am I going to offer it to and how do I package it and price it and blah, 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 blah. All of those things come under that particular cluster. Okay, confidence, it's the who am I to think I can. No one's going to love this. Everyone else is already doing it. What's the point? I might as well go down the garden and eat worms. So everything that comes under confidence has to be addressed. And then the third one for me is the marketing. There's so many options. You know, what do I choose and how do I put it together? So what is it for you? Do those 50 questions. You know, if you, I really encourage you to try and get 50. Um, I've had a couple of clients who have done it and gone, oh my God, it was like pulling teeth, but I got there. Okay, so it's, really, it's a really valuable exercise. And then look for the commonalities. I am sure that you will find that there are groups or clusters of commonalities that you can then address. And I'll make the point here is that depending on where you're at, whether in horizon one or two or three in your business, and that's really time and development, you may find that your solution at the moment, you may only have one. There may be one core program or solution that you're providing, and that's fine. We do vertical development at first, and later on we move to horizontal in terms of other products and programs. But you also might find that you've actually got three that talk to all different solutions. And it might be a, we solve this first, then we solve this, then we solve that. 
So you might have three smaller programs. And that's actually a very clever way of doing things because the person who is most likely to purchase from you is someone who already has. So they may solve step one and then you're logically the one to come and solve step two and step three with. So again, it depends on your business structure. And obviously I can't analyze and prescribe right now, but just giving you a couple of different ideas about how you might um, approach that. But this is a really important way of looking at it to make sure that you're solving a big enough problem. So I've seen businesses where the, the woman are very passionate about what they're doing and the offer is great, but people just don't value it high enough. They're not willing at this stage to invest in it because it's not a tompa. It's a problem, but it's not a top of mind problem. So you need to make sure that you are addressing something that's really important to somebody. So ask yourself, do they, in terms of do your programs and services address those? Do a bit of, yeah, oh look, she's got a journal. There's stationery involved. Didn't see that one coming. So spending some time having a look at that. Okay, then we move on to the third key. Now this is the wholehearted marketing piece. Now I could talk to you about marketing for years, literally. I've been in marketing since uh, 1988. I hate to admit that, it's been quite a while. <laughs> but that means I've got a pretty good grounding in it. But wholehearted marketing brings you into the mix, not just straight formulaic strategy. Okay. The first step to understand is that everybody has a buying cycle. This is a very simple one that I'm showing you here. And just think about yourself. First of all, you're not even aware you've got a problem. Ignorance is bliss. Then you become aware that there is something that needs to change. I actually think there's another piece in here that isn't in this diagram, which I will update. After awareness comes willingness. Because you can be aware that there's something that needs to change, but you're not necessarily willing to let go of it. Great example is my addiction to Diet Coke. I'm aware that I drink too much caffeine, but I am not yet willing to do anything about it. So I'm not going to move in that area, and I'm the first to admit it right now. But once you're aware and willing, then you start the research phase, and this is where you can really influence a potential buyer. This is when you're Googling, when you're asking friends, when you're looking for reviews, when you're seeing what solutions are out there. And this is why you providing content into the world is important. And that content is part of the marketing piece. This is when people are researching. Then they'll compare. Should I do this or should I do that? I'm feeling stressed. Should I go to a naturopath or should I go to a yoga retreat? You know, just as an example. So they're starting to compare what are their options. And you need to consider that, that your competitor may not be in the same industry as you. Should I do Pilates or yoga, for example? You're not competing with other yoga people. It's actually a Pilates instructor. Should I go to a naturopath or should I go to a kinesiologist? Now they could be outside of, oh, that's you. <laughs> they could be outside of your um, original sphere of influence. So you've got to be aware of those sort of things. After comparison comes point of purchase. Ooh. Yeah, of so, course. Um, just on that, how specifically do you recommend addressing, um, like in the content that we're putting out there, they, um, mm -hmm. do you specifically address, hey, I know you may be looking at Pilates as well, but this is why yoga is better or more suited to you or do you focus on what you're, the yoga that you're doing to service that person's tompa? Now, there'll be, there'll be different um, opinions on how to approach this. My personal opinion would be because you are wanting to be resonant and connected to the reader, acknowledging that you're probably at this place at the moment and you might be considering doing this, this or this. That will have a relatability piece to it. Well, you actually are was. And then you bring forward your piece. This is why I really feel that this solution solves these problems, addresses these points, etc. So I'm all for acknowledging where they're at and where they've been. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Oop, I think I just unmuted you. No, it's all good. Okay, so after that point of purchase, then there should always be after sales service, of course. But this buying cycle can be long, okay? We thought about, we've moved to this new house um, in March of this year. We actually thought about moving to this new house for about 11 years. And we had to wait until our son had finished um, his schooling down in North Sydney because it was just not possible for us for his travel. So our buying cycle was really long. 
okay but think of a really short buying cycle it's a hot day you're walking down the road you see an ice cream shop bang really short buying cycle you'll be somewhere in between the two now I know that in my world people um, make two decisions they either come across me and go oh my goodness where have you been all my life and they contact me straight away and jump straight in or they take up to about 12 months to consume all of my um, free opt-ins and trainings and that, and then they feel that they're ready to move. It doesn't seem to be in between those two. It seems to be that I've got those two different triggers. What is it for you? And where can you influence and educate to help bring that buying cycle to a close with you? There's all other things you can do. You can shorten a cycle with promotions and you know, authentic scarcity i.e. this closes by this date so you need to make a decision or I genuinely only take in my case four people away on a retreat so your authentic scarcity can quicken a buying cycle as well but what is it for you oops so this here is on the, the, the diagram you're seeing on the left is what I call the pet plan it's a progressive engagement plan which is the, a very simple business model which I teach as a starting point for most of my clients and the steps in it are from discovery through to engaging, educating, elevating, progressing, embracing, and referring. Now, I will provide you with a copy of this so that you can see how it works. And I will just remind myself. Uh, it's different for everybody, but it is a point of starting. And the marketing piece really begins with how will you be discovered? So on the progressive engagement plan, the discovery level, there's many different ways you can be discovered and you don't want to try and do them all or you will go crazy. But here are some examples. You can be discovered online with your website, with landing pages, with social media. You could be discovered in person at networking events, industry functions, at workshops and festivals, conferences like what I'm going to on Wednesday, I'm going to Brisbane to the We Are podcast conference. And I've already connected with people online who are going, and then I'm going to meet them face to face. It could be speaking. You could be speaking live on stage, or you could be in interviews. I know with what I've tracked that people have come into my world and purchased and invested with me because they've heard me on interviews. Okay, it could be videos, audios, podcasts, Facebook Lives. You, the beauty about the internet these days is that you don't have to wait to be put on a stage. You can create your own. This is an example of what we're doing right here, a virtual event, tele seminars, webinars, interviews, tele summits. Could be local area marketing, depending on what sort of business you have. Could be posters and flyers and demonstrations and displays. And one of my very favorites for small and solo business owners is strategic alliances. Who has a similar audience to you but serves them in a different way. So it's non-competing, it's collaborative. Enhances the experience of your actual um, potential client. So this is the discover step of the pet plan. And people look at that and go, oh my goodness, I'm gonna be here forever. No, this is where you don't do them all. This is where you have to make some wholehearted decisions. Now I was mentioning before about me giving up on Twitter. So it's a great example. I'm on very few so social media platforms. I'm on Facebook, um, I play on LinkedIn because I've got people who leave the corporate world and come into my world and I'm about to embark on Pinterest, but that's it. I don't really play on the other ones. So what is it for you that you need to understand this other point? Now someone's just unmuted, so is there a question pending which I'm happy to answer? No, okay, just yell if there is. Uh, so the way to think of it, think of having a marketing megaphone or megaphones, this is, your, this is the big thing that you do. And then think about having some support acts. I recommend one to two megaphones and about four to five maximum support acts, now, even less if you're feeling um, restrained. So example, this is one of my Discover ones, is my podcast. And so I've got 65 podcast episodes out there in the stratosphere, which have had collectively almost 20,000 downloads. So that's people who have been exposed to my philosophy and my guests and all that type of stuff. And associated with that is often downloads, as in you've got to opt in to get a resource that enhances the listening experience. So I build my list that way. So that's a marketing megaphone. And here's another one, um, is that I have my Facebook page. 
and I have my Facebook group as well if you guys are involved in that. So here's what you need, and there's lots more layers to marketing, but you know, there's only so much that I can, I can show you here. But here's what you need to consider. What's most important when making your decisions as to which marketing tactics or communication channels you'll use, first of all, your natural skills. Now, I'm a bit of a talker, in case you haven't noticed. So it's not surprising that I have podcasts and webinars and Facebook Lives as part of my marketing mix. Okay? The next one is the watering holes. Where are your most aligned clients most seen? You know, if they adore Twitter, like that, Twitter's a very startup tech space, and so there's a lot of people who do very well on Twitter, but where is it for you? What's a watering hole for your most aligned client? And the next one is your message. You ha it doesn't matter at the end of the day where you market, but if your message keeps changing every half an hour, it's very difficult for me to get a handle on what you're about. So one of my message lines, for example, is what will unfold in your next chapter? So I use curiosity as one of my um, core messaging lines. And you will see that line in tons of places. Okay? I say it on the podcast, it's in my email signatures, it's in my newsletters, it's in the bottom of programs, it's all over the place. So with that, consistency is what's key here. Okay? But I want to put a little asterisk beside that because the consistency also needs to be aligned with your availability. So for example, I was told you must podcast every week. That's it, no exceptions. Once a week, that's the way podcasts work. And I did that for about eight months and then realized that I was, I was doing the burnout thing again. So I actually podcast fortnightly. And that works for me works for my audience as well. So it's making decisions that support you. We're looking for sustainability here, not a flash in the pan, okay? So I want you to ask those questions of yourself when you begin to look at your marketing, your wholehearted marketing options. And you've got to track your results because what you focus on grows, as we know. So I guess with the marketing piece, I really want you to realize that there's no guru with the answers. Like I believe in frameworks, not formulas. You could take somebody else's formula that's, you know, yielded them multiple six figures and put it into practice step by step. It won't necessarily get you the same results because you're a different person with different services and a different audience. So there isn't a guru. Now, you can certainly be informed and take learnings from people just like you are here with me. But at the end of the day, it needs to resonate and align with who you are. That's what's most important. So I've got a bit of a wholehearted marketing mantra. So there's no right way that I must follow. It's just the right way for me. There's no wrong way that I must avoid. There's just what doesn't resonate with me and my audience. So I'll keep checking in and adjusting my course to stay aligned with my vision and I'll consistently implement marketing that feels good and leverages my natural talents and style. If it feels slimy and icky, it possibly is. Don't do it. Okay. Now there is, a, there is an asterisk beside that. It's things that are new sometimes feel icky but there's a big difference between slimy and icky. Okay? Having a sales conversation can feel icky, but it need not be slimy at all. I use a wholehearted sales framework, which I teach my clients, and it don't feel icky or slimy, I guarantee. Okay, so that's the marketing piece to look at for now. And we'll come into the fourth key. We're getting in the home straight. So I want you to be aware of the zones, as I call them. These are the danger zones. And there's, um, again, there's a piece in your workbook where you can complete this. So without that clear vision and goals, and most importantly, trust in yourself, the wholehearted trust in yourself, that's when that overwhelm and the bright, shiny options comes to play. Okay? So you've got to get those first pieces in place. Okay? And if you do that, that's when you end up following these cookie cutter solutions that don't fit with you. And that's where your implementation becomes very scattered and you're doing tactics, I'll just do this and this, and I'll post over here, and I'll send this and that, and it's not a lined strategy. Big difference between tactics and strategy, which I'll show you in a sec. And that's when those traps come up, the ones that hurt your confidence, your creativity, and your cash flow, things that, you know, don't want to happen to you. So the most common traps that I've seen are the comparison trap, and there's a great big um, Confession here, this is my one. The comparison trap is the one that I fall into most often and I need to stop consuming 
to get out of this trap. But it basically says I'm not good enough, my work's not good enough, such and such is so much better. If I haven't made it by now at the ripe old age of 48, I never will because I'm too old, I'm too young, well I wish, I'm too fat, I'm too stupid, whatever. Okay, I'll never have that level of success and my story is not inspiring. Those are really common thoughts that happen in the comparison trap. Extremely common when you're on social media too much and start scrolling through your feed. And that's the voice of experience speaking there. Another one's the approval trap. Okay? I've got to keep people happy. I don't want them to disapprove of what I'm going to do or say. And uh, it's a bit dangerous to share my story because what people think of me is really important. I can't stand anyone saying negative things about me. And I have to give people what they want, regardless of what I feel or want. That last one, example, I used to do six-month mentoring programs, just one-on-one. -on -one, and I hated it. I love three months when it's one-on-one -on -one, and I love 10 months, like the long period when we're in mastermind circles. But that six months felt really draining. But I had to do it because that's what people wanted, right? It's not true. Not true at all. So sometimes you get stuck in the approval trap. And just one other point here. Um, what people think of me is really important. Uh, most of you would have heard of Brené Brown. Uh, she's one of my what I call mentors from afar. She doesn't know it, but she's very important to me. But she has a great concept of taking a little piece of paper and on there writing the four or five names of people whose opinion really matters. Okay? The ones that really matter. Like your kids, like your best friend, like your partner, your spouse, whoever. And keeping that little bit of paper in your wallet and when you're feeling crappy about here, when you're feeling and you're in the approval trap, reminding yourself of whose, whose opinions are actually important. And yours should be on the list. Yours should be on the list. It's a big part about next chapters. It's moving into self-trust, huge part of the journey. The third one's the unworthiness trap. This is a nasty one. I can't make good money doing what I love, so why even try? I've got nothing original to say or contribute. It's all been said before. My story's not inspiring. I'm just not cut out for this. I'm not ready. I'm not good enough, and I never will be. So again, I might as well just give it up. Self-sabotage, don't try. On the last call, we just um, asked briefly which were the traps that people saw themselves falling into most often. So I'd love to know. I'll just unmute you and check if that's okay. So Rachel, which one is the one or three of those traps that you fall into most often? Number two, the approval trap. Ah, yep, checking out everyone has to approve of what it is that I'm bringing into the world. Yeah, that's a really yeah. common one. Thank you, Dara. <laughs> Justine, how about yourself? Um, um, the approval and unworthiness, yeah. So the approval definitely with um, clients um, and yeah. more unworthiness at the personal level. But I think, yeah. That sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, that's great. Thanks, darling. Um, now, I can't see everybody's names now. They seem to have disappeared off my screen, so I'm just going to unmute whom I think is Lisa. Hello, is that me? Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's you. <laughs> Um, yeah, probably which, are, which of those traps do you find yourself? Yeah. Right, at, the, at the moment, definitely approval um, and and probably I'm doing a lot of the comparing on social media things. So I'm putting myself, I'm actually putting myself out of a lot of social media because it's just mm. doing me in. Um, and in the past, it's been unworthiness for sure and that just creeps in every now and again. You know, raising okay, the so yeah, you, you recognise them as well. Yep, these are definitely the most common ones. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. Hey, coming across. Ah, I don't have your name, darling. Long hair, look right at me, smiling. <laughs> Go for it. Anita, can you Which hear me? are the ones that you... Yes, perfectly. Which are the ones that you fall into, darling? Uh, I would say self-trust at the moment. I'm, I'm going through a growth mm -hmm. phase, so just having that trust in myself that I'm ready to take the next leap and throw everything at it and just believing in yep. myself a bit more. <clears throat> Absolutely. That's the reason that um, you know, I was talking about the clusters, the three areas that, that I see people need the most often, and that's self-belief. That is definitely one of them. So we're all, we're, we're all going to celebrate when you do take that leap. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I'm just unmuting Michelle. I can see names now. Michelle, which of the three do you tend to fall into? Hello, Michelle. 
Hello, Michelle. Oh, it doesn't seem to be working for her. I'm going to unmute Lindsay. Lindsay, are you still there, madam? Hello. Okay, I'm finding it. Um, the unmuting is misbehaving. I have Melody is another, is another name that I recognise. Melody. Hello. Tell us which one of those traps grabs okay, you. Well, while everyone else was doing that, I was giving them a mark out of 10 because I couldn't find the one that was most important. Um, so in order of the most important and working back, because <laughs> they're all important, um, the unworthiness trap first, comparison second, and approval third. So there are, there are all three of them uh, left to us at different times and you can identify them. Actually, one of the other ones that came up in a previous call was the, I think everyone will probably relate to as well, is the perfectionist trap, yep. which I will be adding in as well, that it, because it, it tends to make us procrastinate enough. It's got to be absolutely all the ducks lined up in a row before we release it into the world. So that might be another one to add to the list as well. A bit scary, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Um, right. I've also, I've just unmuted, um, sorry, yes? No, no, it's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, I've just unmuted Mitch and Chrissy. I'm not sure which of the two of you are there. Chrissy, are you with us at the moment? Okay, I'll try. Can you hear me now? Yes, you are there. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, sorry, I had to do it on my screen as well as you doing it. I don't know. Anyway, at least you can hear me. Um, yes, great call, Angela. Thank you. Um, comparison always comes up for me. But um, doing this, I realise at different times, approval and unworthiness, some of those points come in. <laughs> so I'll take the whole lot, thanks. Uh, but comparison. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, you and I both, hey. Thank you, yeah. Chrissy. Yeah. And and Claire, if I can unmute you for a moment, if you're there with us. Hi. Yeah, I probably Hello. fall on. Yeah. Hi. I probably fall on all three at certain times, depending. Um, probably the people pleasing one, so the approval one has been big, but I've done quite a bit of work on that, so I, I can say I'm, yeah, kind of got that under my belt a bit more now. Excellent. Well, it's good to hear about the work on it because it's definitely things that we we'll need to continually take a look at. So thank yeah, you for sharing that with me. Okay, I'll just bring these back over and we'll get on to the next slide. Thank you guys. I mean, the purpose of, of having that quick unmute was to demonstrate the reality that these traps are common to all of us and that perfection piece comes in as well. But it's about dialing up your self-awareness and once you've got the awareness up and you can recognise the patterns, then you can change them. So this is really about that the limits that you believe are there are actually just inside your head. We have thousands of thoughts every day. Why is it that we tend to hold on to and believe the ones that say we're not enough? Okay, that seems to be a pattern for many, many, many of us. And this really is a, a journey into self-trust and confidence. So just when the voice comes up, I've got lots of tools for dealing with it. Uh, one of them is EFT, which is the Emotional Freedom Technique, the tapping, which helps. And another one I've been trained in is Acceptance Commitment Training. And a really good trick, and I'll just give you one of them here, when those thoughts hit, one of the things that you can do is go, oh, there's that story again, the one that tells me I'm not enough. Recognize that one. So you put space between you and the thought. There's that story again, as opposed to falling into the cycle of believing it. That just gives you space so that you can respond to the thought rather than just accept it. Lots more, but that's a really handy wee one. So you've got to understand what is it that triggers you. We've heard talk about being on social media and that being a trigger. I know it certainly is for me. So you've got to be aware of it. So know what are your vulnerability triggers. Another one for me is when I'm tired. Okay, don't make big decisions about your worthiness and your business when you're tired. I've had a very intense three weeks. And at the moment, if I made decisions to cut and change my business, they would not be good decisions. So tiredness, social media are two of mine and I've got others as well. Be aware, what are they for you so you can recognise them and not fall into the trap. And then it's a case of having a self-compassion plan in place. You don't want to wait until the heat of the moment when you're feeling crappy. You want to have something ready for when those thoughts emerge. So recognising your triggers is definitely one of them. Getting off social media is the next if that's the one for you. 
reconnecting to your vision. Now, this is a concept, excuse me, that I call GOS, get off self. You know, what are you here for? You know, what, what are you doing this work in the world for? This is the big why. So reconnecting back to your vision. Cultivating a support circle. I'm a big believer in belief buddies, of having at least one person who when you're having one of these days, you can call them up and say, tell me again why I'm fabulous and I should keep doing what I'm doing. And you do exactly the same to them. Belief buddies are a huge part. So remember I mentioned before about you, you are the result of the five people you spend the most time with. If you're in isolation a lot, as many of us are, take steps to change that. Make sure that you have people that you can connect with. Oh, there's the adopt a belief buddy. Create a fabulous file. Now, if you're in my world, you would have heard of this a lot. A fabulous file is literally a physical file of all the evidence of your fabulosity, be it testimonials and feedback, cards, photos, all the different things that remind you that you're doing a great job. And my fabulous file has cards from my kids in it because part of my um, triggers was that having a, a successful business means that I'm neglecting my kids, which is not true. And I've got cards from them that prove that. And exploring a modality. I mentioned EFT and acceptance commitment training. There's different modalities for different people that does support you in building that self-belief. That's just a wee shot of what was my um, fabulous file. It's now exploded into a great big box that sits up in my, in my office. But the idea of a fabulous file is when the crappiness hits you, go roll around in it for a while. Take yourself out the balcony, sit in the sun and read some of that feedback you've got from people who you have made a difference for, because we all have. Okay? So when the traps are wide open and drawing me in, this is what I will do. So I gave you some examples of steps you can take. I want you to have a self-compassion plan. But when the proverbial hits the fan and you feel like throwing it all away, okay, what are the steps that you can take? And it can be as simple as, you know, we live near the ocean now, so one of my things is getting down and walking along the waterfront. You know, that always makes me feel better. What is it for you? Don't wait till it happens. Be ready for when it does. And the fifth key, this is the cascade plan concept. Okay, planning being so important. And you've already, back at the second key, been looking back and seeing which are the parts of your business that are working for you and aren't, you need to tweak and change. Now you need to plan going forward. So this is about what is my vision? That's the first step. Has to sit at the top of your entire plan. Why are you doing this? Who are you doing it for? Why is it important to you and to them? That provides the inspiration. Okay. The second step of what are my goals? Because okay, that provides the stretch. So being specific about what is it that you want to achieve in 2018. Now this is a big plan. You then break that down into what well, I like breaking it down into 90-day plans, but let's just stay up at the big plan. Underneath your goals, you have your strategies. If one of your goals is to launch a group program on XYZ and to attract 5, 10, 15 people into it, what's your strategy behind that? And then underneath the strategy is your tactics. So your strategy, for example, might be outreach via social media and online training. That might be the overall strategy to launch your program. Then what are the tactics? Create the slides, book the date, do the Facebook ads, send an email out to your strategic alliance partners, etc. See, there's a difference between a strategy and a tactic. And so many of us go from vision, have a couple of main vague sort of goals and then jump straight into tactics. And that's when you end up taking action all over the place but not getting any traction. So you need to take this four-step approach to planning. Now just to touch you on goals for a moment, I mentioned SMART and HEART. Okay, so the SMART goals are very much the linear, the left-hand side of the brain. They're specific and they're measurable and they're achievable and they're relevant and they're time-bound. It's all the very masculine way of doing business, which you have to have. But balance, the heart objectives or goals are harmonious and they're engaging and aspirational and refreshing, tantalizing. It's that enthusiasm piece that I was talking about. Because if you set a goal and you look at it and go, meh, then your level of energy around actually achieving it is going to be pretty meh too. So you need to set those goals which look on both sides of the coin. And just some examples of key areas where you might set goals. Financial for sure. 
Learning goals, visibility goals. Visibility could be around, you know, how many people are in your group or liking your page or how many speaking gigs you get or whatever the case may be. Might be participants in your programs. Might be around learning or getting published. And I really think you should have some goals around relaxation. Where are you going to go on retreat next year? How are you going to have some time out? For me, I work very hard. <laughs> Actually, that sounds hilarious. I work really hard on not working on Fridays. <laughs> so in my calendar, I try to leave at least half a day every Friday where I have no appointments at all so I can relax a little. So think about some core areas for goals and then set yourself some goals for 2018 based on all the things we've been talking about today. And don't forget to trifecta them. I will go on one, two, three retreats in 2018. <laughs> Maybe that's one of your um, relaxation goals. Okay, so bringing the pieces together. It's a wholehearted blend, guys. It really is. It's strategy. You need it. But it's also your values and your mindset. So knowing what you stand for so that you can create that vision so it inspires you to get pulled forward. Oops. It's about developing and implementing that consistent strategy that leverages your style. Not what someone says it should be, but the way that you like to show up in the world. And it's really about cultivating that mindset and having a support circle so that you do keep taking consistent action. Okay, so look at that wholehearted success trilogy. Values, mindset, marketing. Get that vision. You know, I want you to take some time to work out your story and your stance. You know, what do you stand for? What's important to you? What are you going to solve in the world? Why is that important? And then start to share that so people can resonate and connect with you. Please reverse gap yourself. So one of the things I want you to do when you're off this call is very much to look at what have I achieved this year? Because we are so quick to smack ourselves and go, oh, you didn't do this and you didn't do that. Okay, reverse gap yourself. Be aware of those danger zones. What is your self-compassion plan going to be? And a cascade plan that takes you from vision to goals to strategy for tactics. Just get some broad brush strokes going for 2018. We can always drill down together further. But you've got to have that big picture that inspires you. And then I'm a huge believer in the community and support that you need. Isolation is a dream killer. Isolation stops entrepreneurs and small business owners more often than anything. Because you're at home, you know, I'm in my, I'm in my kitchen, I have, a, I have an office downstairs, but where are you? you know, most of you, I would say right now, are working at home alone. So I really want you to introduce community into your world, okay? So this is the part of the call where I will be making an invitation if it feels right to you. So by all means, if you're, if you're running short of time, you can disappear, but I would love you to hold on here a wee while and see whether or not this is a good fit for you. So I'd like to talk to you about Next Chapter Success Circles. Okay, I love this quote, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. It's one of my very favourite quotes. Now, you'll find in your workbook, there is some feedback from ladies who have been in the circles for the last three years. This is Jo Robinson. She's a life coach in New Zealand, New Zealand, where my hometown is. So she talks about how the circle is amazing. It keeps on giving. It's provided a support, accountability, resources, feedback, expert help, and friendship. It meant I didn't feel like I was going alone. I had a support team. And her knowledge and marketing expertise has increased enormously. And when she looks back, she can see how far she's come. I love reading really. that. makes me feel happy. <clears throat> now, success circles involve masterminds. They involve retreats. They involve spending quality time with quality people. It's the way I like to look at it. <clears throat> And they are, I like to think of them as first aid kits for entrepreneurs. So it's the antidote for isolation. It is the solution to perfectionism and procrastination because when you need to get on a call with us and tell us what you've done, you tend to get it done. I've been known on my own mastermind calls to finish the videos that I promised I'd do the night before because it just gives you that kick to be accountable. Now, it's definitely the medicine for marketing overwhelm. That's my area where I will work on very much with you so that you don't get caught with those bright, shiny options because it's the cure for that. And it's the vaccination against self-doubt because okay? when you're by yourself, that self-doubt can get very, very loud. So what happens in a circle? When you come to a call on a fortnightly basis, we first of all celebrate what have you achieved in the last two weeks? 
is you know that I believe in reverse gapping and future fuel. I keep circles very small. There's only four people per circle, so everybody gets a hot seat every two weeks. What does that mean? That means that you bring your challenge, the thing that you need the collective help from, every single time you're on a call together. You don't have to wait till next month for your turn. And then we do goal setting for what you're going to be doing for the next two weeks. You also have access to my full resource library where everything that's in my brain is in the library. Everything from marketing to self-confidence to masterclasses to business planning tools, everything is in there. It's all kept in the next chapter hub and you have full access to all of it. You can go crazy, but I can also point you to places where things that I think are most relevant for you. I have guest presenters during the year because although I've got a lot of experience and depth of knowledge, I don't have it all. So I bring in experts to help in certain areas and they present as well in online workshops. And these are just some examples. Kelly, who does um, client pathways, which is funnels. We just like calling them pathways because it sounds more wholehearted. Emma Gray, who teaches about copywriting and storytelling. Larissa Halls, who's my own mindset coach. She comes in and does a session as well. So really what you're looking at in total, it's foundational training. There's videos that you watch at the beginning that make sure that you have all the pieces in place. What I see is the essential pieces in place to get your business started. It's fortnightly mastermind calls, optional but highly recommended in-person retreats. We just came back from Percolbin in the Hunter Valley last week. You have personal mentoring sessions with me, three during the year to get you started, to check in with you and to finish you on a high. Those specialized expert topics, those presenters, all the resources, the online community, because of course we have a Facebook group, everyone does these days. So in between calls, you're connected with your other women and they also meet outside as well. And you have small personal groups. I know that there are masterminds that can have up to 15, 20, 30 people in them. To me, that's not a mastermind. To me, a small group where you get taken care of each fortnight is a mastermind. It's the experience that I'm in and it's the one that I cultivate for people. So I'm going to have five groups running in the new year at two different levels, depending on where you are in your business. Now, there's seven spots available in total still. The rest are filled. And one of those spots is at the higher level, the diamond level, and the other six spots are at the circle level. So that's what's available. Chrissy's on the line, and this is one of her beautiful um, pieces of feedback that she provided about how wholehearted the support is in a circle and how we do a pretty good job of bringing like-minded people together into a group. You need people at a similar level of business for you, but you need them to be from different industries if possible because that's when you get a fresh perspective. And Lyndall, who's an editor, talks about how she really recommends the experience for women who are looking for connection, community, focus, direction, and general well-meaning butt kicking, which was a nice way of finishing it. There's also feedback from Sarah, who's a visual marketing consultant. <clears throat> but you can read about all of that feedback and more on my circle page. You literally just go to angelaraspis.com forward slash circle. And if you'd like to apply, then the next step is for us to have a conversation. For me to talk to you about your goals, what it is that you're looking to achieve in 2018, and what it might look like if the circle is a good fit for you. Now, I think you can pretty much get a good handle on the way that I show up in the world. I don't bring people into circles if I don't feel that it will help you reach your goals. Some people really need just plain old one-on-one. -on -one. Some people really need the community that keeps them moving forward, connecting in with others. So it depends on the individual. But I've completely changed my business model and most of my work is now done with masterminds because I've seen how powerful they are. And because I'm in one as well, so I've got that first-hand experience with what it can do for you and your business. So that is my invitation to you. If you would like to have my wholehearted support in 2018 and also be in that community, then this could be the perfect spot for you. But we've got a little time before we end up, so does anyone have any questions about any of the content that I've shared with you today? Or well, you can ask about circles or anything else that leaps to mind, then I'd be happy to help. Or, of course, you can always follow up with an email as well. Is that a question or a wave? Uh, hey no, there. it's a good one. I have to run to a 12.30 meeting. I'm just conscious of time. Um, so I'm assuming we talk about the costs of being involved in the mastermind where we apply? Yeah, absolutely. And I, the costs are very accessible compared to one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I can certainly go through those with you and explain okay. what you'll be looking at. I'm 
to leave my current mastermind group because I feel like the teacher rather than the student. It's time to move on then if that's the feeling, absolutely. Yeah, and um, I really want to be in a group of people that's above me and already reaching six figures so that I can be pushed to do seven figures kind of thing. So, well, well there's, um, we should definitely... We should definitely have a conversation about the diamond level with you then, so okay. um, where we have got women who are, who are at that level. So, drop me yeah. drop me an email, Dala, and we'll work out a time to chat. But don't miss don't Thanks. miss your meeting. You've got four minutes. <laughs> no, I know. I've got a race off. I'm going to call her and say I was too excited for you. I was like, ah, all good. But thank you. Um, chat with you. Soon. You're really welcome. Okay, take care. <laughs> Okay, so just checking in to see if there's any other questions or comments before we all disappear and have lunch and do more things. No? Okay, what I would really strongly, um, uh, thank you Chrissy, no questions, great call, highly recommend Masterminds, thank you darling. Uh, what I would encourage you all to do is go back through that book, the printout that you've got, um, which has the questions that are associated with the review part in particular of today's call. There's lots of actions that you can take there which will make a really big difference. Whether or not you step forward and end up working with me or not, I want you to come off this call knowing that you've got actions to take that will make a difference for you in 2018. So thank you so much everybody for spending the time with me this lunch hour. Just checking the chat. Uh -uh. Ah, thank you Lisa. And um, if you need me at all, you can reply to my emails, find me in the Facebook group and track me down. I'll be here. Really happy to talk to you. So thanks again for your time, guys. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Your Next Chapter podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please let me know. Pop over to AngelaRaspis.com to subscribe to the show and leave a review. And whilst you're there, you can also enjoy valuable free resources, including show notes and downloads, along with the Next Chapter community, where you can connect with other wholehearted women on the same journey as you. We'd love to welcome and support you as your next chapter unfolds. See you next time.